the third eye chakra, also known as the brow chakra, indigo or purple chakra. It is the sixth chakra and it is located um, on the brow, slightly above the eyebrows in the middle of the forehead. It can also be associated with the sixth sense, intuition, wisdom, spiritual awareness, seeing clearly, perspective and balance. It can be related to the eyes, the brain, sinuses and pineal gland. It is your sense, so sense the sixth sense or your intuition. The element of light. When in balance, you can have a clear brain, clear sight, imagination, insight and a balance between logic and intuition. When weak or damaged, it can be an overly practical brain, struggle to be creative, narrow-minded and dismissive of others' opinions, detached from spirituality. If it's overdeveloped, then there can be a feeling of often feeling very overwhelmed, confused and struggle to concentrate or plan ahead and out of touch with reality, superstitious, suffer with feelings of delusion and paranoia. Crystals that can be good for this um, chakra is triindigo or purple crystals such as azure and amethyst to clear brain and boost intuition. And I will be going into more detail now um, with everything you need to know about this chakra. So the third eye chakra is located on the forehead. And as we mentioned, it's that spot that is kind of right in between the two eyebrows. And in terms of your physical body, this chakra governs your two eyes and both hemispheres of the brain. So it is linked to clear sightedness and balanced thinking. On a spiritual level, it is in charge of your sixth sense, which can give you important insights and intriguing glimpses of the non-physical world. The third eye is symbolic rather than scientific, an inner eye with a perception far beyond ordinary sight and a doorway to the vivid limits of, limits of your imagination, memory or dreams. In the lower chakras, psychic messages tend to show up physically as things like your gut feelings, whereas in the third eye chakra, psychic information usually comes straight into your mind as a sort of knowing. So when you think of somebody out of the blue just before they email you, this could be simply a coincidence. Me personally, I don't really believe in coincidences, but if such coincidences happen a lot, it's your sixth sense working. Um, when the a third eye is open, you might get messages via clairvoyance, which is seeing with your inner eye, clairaudience, which is hearing with your inner ear or telepathy. You might have glimpses of the future, be able to see angels and spirits or communicate with your guides. But best of all, you may already be getting a sense of our physical reality isn't the only one and that we are all parts of a greater reality. But this chakra is also about staying in touch with reality. Um, when it is working well, everything is paired up and nicely balanced and you can access both the logical and intuitive ideas of your brain. Take in a lot of information, but maintain perspective and see the big picture. You can view the physical outer world clearly, but then you can also trust your inner wisdom and messages that you might get from spirit. So when the third eye chakra is balanced, when it is working well, you can see where you're going. It's, you know, like driving along with a sparkling clean windscreen in good weather and the landscape is all spread out in front of you. And on a human level, this may be because you have a clear brain and got yourself organized for the day. But on a soul level, it's more profound when your inner vision is clear. You know which direction you need to go in in the long term that so that your spirit can evolve. The area around a healthy third eye chakra feels very clean. You don't let other people's priorities, emotions or general muddle cloud your vision. If you do find yourself surrounded by other people's energy, um, you will end up taking steps that you'll have to clear that away and that's where it comes into things like psychic protection and energy protection because this chakra is so balanced um you use both the left and the right sides of your brain your combination of logic and intuition means that you are wise and can come up with practical creative solutions for all sorts of problems 
You may read widely or take in information from many different sources, but you have the knack of simplifying everything and making it easy to understand. And you can often see patterns or an obvious path where other people can't. And that all comes down to that balance. Now, visual beauty may be important to you as well, and you can appreciate details as well as the bigger picture. You could have a really vivid imagination and be able to come up with images and stories with your words. You may be able to remember your dreams and get lots of information from them. I always recommend to people like having a dream journal because it's a great way that you can strengthen your third eye chakra by remembering your dreams more spiritually it is important and you have a strong moral compass you have a sense that there is more than our physical reality so you pay attention to your intuition and may be open to the idea of communicating with angels or spirit guides now I'm then going to let you know about how to kind of recognize when the third eye chakra is weak or damaged so if your third eye doesn't open up properly there won't be much information flowing in and out of it. This can make you narrow-minded and you will almost certainly miss out on some of the beauty of life. In particular, if you block out anything that you can't actually see, touch, hear, taste or smell, you won't get the chance to appreciate the rich, colourful world of the spirit or the imagination. You might find it difficult to visualise. Perhaps creative essays were hard and baffling when you were like in school or you didn't really see the point of reading fiction. You might not remember your dreams. You may shrug them off as unimportant. You might dismiss intuition as a load of mumbo jumbo (laughs) and you just don't pay any kind of attention. Um, If you insist that the only truths are logical and reason, you may cut yourself off from your spirituality. To you, life won't be a progression and an unfolding, but a work, workman-like job that finishes when you die. And that's pretty sad when people are stuck in that literally work and die mode because they're not seeing the beauty that, you know, <laughs> there is. If your lower chakras are strong, the markers of like worldly success, such as getting a promotion or buying a better car, might be enough for you. But you may feel a slight emptiness of what's the point of it all. That yearning when you can't quite put your finger on. If you can't get perspective through this chakra, you might get bogged down by the small details of human existence, drawn into pretty squabbles or minor difficulties if anyone has opinions or experiences different from your own particularly when they talk about you know stuff like angels or spirits you may find it very uncomfortable and may squash them by being rude and dismissive if you were born into a logical practical family your sixth chakra may never have had the chance to open fully or you may have closed it down as a child particularly if you were scared of ghosts or told off for making things up or bullied for being you know softer or different um, than others now how to recognize when the third eye chakra is overdeveloped well when this chakra is stuck wide open so much energy flows in and out that you get overwhelmed really easily and you can really lose touch with reality and this is partly a problem of modern life so if you live in a city commute to work or use social media you can be bombarded with images and information every day and that's one thing I really want to make an emphasis on is I really recommend people to really cut down on things like using their phone tvs like anything where you've got all this artificial light and all of this extra um images popping up because imagine when you scroll and you're scrolling through all those images are going into your mind and into your mind's eye it's too much so and then imagine adding in your own mental chatter memories of the past anxieties about the future and you can be processing literally thousands of different thoughts and if you never take time out to rest your brain it can be hard to know what is important Now, if your third eye is also letting in too much psychic or subtle information, there's even more background noise. Some of these messages may be ambiguous anyway, and if you are overwhelmed, it can be hard to pick out an appropriate response. Instead, this is an example, but you could jump to such a conclusion like, oh, my neighbour didn't smile smile at me this morning. Um, Oh, I'm sure I've offended her. Or you become overly jumpy or superstitious, like, 
you know how some people are like, oh my God, I saw a magpie on the way to the airport. That means I need to, you know, should I be cancelling my flight? You know, it's a bit extreme. So, and that's where it's like, not you wouldn't be in touch with trusting your intuition or your gut instincts now when the sixth chakra is spinning too fast you might become ungrounded and spacey suffer from brain fog or find it hard to concentrate think clearly or plan ahead that is why it's so important to really focus on grounding every day your imagination might run wild to the point of delusion you might even become paranoid and hallucinate personally i do believe that ghosts are real and spirits and if you see frightening ghosts or shadows um, that other very psychic people can't, then your third eye probably does need some help because that's where I would say they're like things of a lower vibration um, or energy, if that makes sense. So they're just some little pointers to think about. But then I'm going to tell you now some information on how that you can work on healing that third eye. So... It, generally speaking, the third eye chakra should be like a dark bluish indigo, but as it has quite a limited range, the shade of it, um, you can also associate it with all the beautiful shades of purple. Um, I tend to think that leaving white and pale violet is for the crown chakra though. So use your eyes um, to look out for purple everywhere you know, lavender, wisteria, purple twilight, purple nail polish, um, distant purple mountains. And each time you spot it, it's a reminder to focus on your third eye chakra. Also look out for light, light coming through something translucent and crystalline, such as amethyst ring can be really special. Wear something purple or indigo, start with something small, such as like, you know, it could be purple tinted sunglasses, um, perhaps like a purple vase, sorry, a vase, you know, with purple flowers, or you could put it somewhere close to like a window or a mirror to remind yourself of that inner vision. Um, you could even make like a little altar or post pictures of purple items. Um, that is another good way. Um, so anything you are drawn to that is purple, focus on that. You can also literally feed your third eye chakra Purple food is often often full of pigments known um, that are really good for you in the body. And now look out for deep purple vegetables such as aubergines, cabbage, um, anything, any kind of vegetable with a purple tinge, um, even including purple sprouting broccoli, onions, garlic, asparagus. Um, they are fabulously unusual varieties of carrots, peppers, radishes, and potatoes. And even like you can get um, bright purple cauliflower. Indigo and purple fruits include black blackberries, um, blueberries, black currants, elderberries, figs, plums, black cherries, purple grapes. And you can even garnish your food with um, edible aluminium flowers or use lavender and violet petals and when you eat that purple food set the intention that you are using its purple power to clarify your third eye chakra you can also eat food that is good for the eyes and brain including um, food containing beneficial fats such as oily fish avocado walnuts um, berries and multicolored vegetables um, that can also help with your other chakras as well and every time you make an effort to arrange your food attractively and stop and look at it before you eat it it's another reminder that you are focusing on that chakra so it's it's so special and um, all the elements you can bring in Combining that with also healing your physical body, so balancing that third eye chakra and looking after your eyes and forehead and brain. Now with your eyes, think about do you need your eyes testing? Um, could they do the do with a rest from a computer screen, especially those of you that work on computers all day, every day? Maybe every 30 minutes or so, just stop and give the, your eyes a break. And most eyes will always benefit from spending time outside where you relax your focus farther away. Try rubbing your palms together to create heat and then hold your hands over your eyes for a few minutes and you can also seek out some eye exercises to strengthen and relax them. Um, looking after your forehead, 
you know, things like booking in for a facial or head massage or some facial acupressure. Um, I personally love doing like pressure points along the face because I feel like it really helps that area, but also with releasing any tension that is held there. Um, uh, there is also certain um, Ayurvedic therapies as well, which can be, you know, really beneficial. So again, just focus your attention on that area. Then looking after your brain, things like puzzles, they boost the left and the right side of your brain. The left side is all about logic, order and detail, while the right side of the brain is concerned with colour, intuition and creativity. And it's always good to have a nice balance. Meditation can clear and reboot your brain um which is i always recommend meditation to people and some exercise as well um exercise is really good like running cycling um any type of exercise you're drawn to walking swimming riding like any kind of thing um they all work well with intuition as well because as you move it it helps the energy through your body flow um, also things like when you do yoga and stuff like you can really focus on breathing and nostril breathing there's a lot of different techniques you can look up that can be really helpful for that too <clears throat> now also tuning into that third eye chakra um it is linked to the element of light and what i'm going to discuss now is all about boosting your intuition and your vision and gaining perspective so this applies to someone's that may be underdeveloped or is balanced these are great to help with that obviously if it's overbalanced then i wouldn't recommend these just yet you need to work on like balancing it out through your other chakras too so with developing your sixth sense okay this chakra connects us to our inner wisdom and intuition our ancient ancestors needed all their senses, you know, sight, hearing, touch, taste and smell, plus their sixth sense intuition simply to survive. And that is the difference now between our ancestors time and the now, because now we have all this modern technology that does everything for us. We don't actually think anymore. And this is why I'm so like not someone that advocates for all this technology. Yes, there may be some advantages to it but I do believe in going back to the natural senses that we were given. Animals still use the extra sense um, because most of us have forgotten how to but your third eye chakra can help you to fine-tune your sixth sense in the modern world. It can warn you of danger, save a lot of time, like you know you could get a flash of insight, it produces far quicker results than wading through a pile of data and bring a beautiful spiritual awareness to your life meditate with your eyes closed you know you can focus on the middle of your forehead um if images come up notice them and let them go if they are important you will remember them afterwards anyway so don't worry about that and like i say always um keep a pen and paper nearby if you do meditate so then when you kind of come back around and you can write down what you remember then you can ask a question and then do something else go for a walk have a bath chop the vegetables you know for your dinner whatever it is you're doing and then see if the answer or a pattern comes up spontaneously from your intuition my other one that's on my list is keeping a dream diary write down what you saw in your dreams and look it up in a dream dictionary or the dream dictionary books you can buy there may be several different interpretations many of them wild and out there but you will always know when something makes sense and again trust what resonates and leave what doesn't be aware of coincidences or of words or images that keep coming up if songs keep running around your head, notice what the words are saying. Like, I'm sure we all have that where songs just randomly come into our head. We haven't been thinking about that song. We might not have even heard it for years and we just start singing it or the words are in our mind. So look those up and see what messages are within them. Some people like to use things like oracle cards. Um, and the beauty of those is obviously that you have images and words that can be interpreted in different ways and none of them are right or in an absolute sense, but they can stimulate your intuition and give you a message that is correct for you at the time. Things like horoscopes and that, they kind of work in the same way. Some people like to learn to see auras. Um, so again, it works differently for different people. Some people might see it in their mind's eye. Some people might see it. Some people might just know what color they're seeing, but you could literally do that in a basic exercise. So you could get a friend to sit in front of a grayish wall. 
then dim your lights down or use candles. And then if you unfocus your eyes, you might see an outline of a white or bluish energy around them, which is a layer of their physical energy. So with practice, you may be able to see other colours too. And that's something the more you strengthen that, that you can see. Not Again, not everyone, but some people may. Um, looking out for spiritual signs then. So concentrate on the good ones that make you feel happy. Um, it's, it's what makes you feel good and focus on that, okay? Um, and they can come to you in all different ways. It might be something simple, like you might just find a feather out of nowhere. Um, you might hear that song on the radio. You might have a vision of something or a download of information um things as well if you've got a hunch that you've got a problem like for instance you might feel like you could have a ghost or a spirit in your house or a health issue for example check it out with your logical brain and see if you can solve it and if that niggling feeling won't go away ask for help from like maybe a professional um so for instance like if you if it doesn't go away then maybe yeah go to a doctor or and you feel like there's something in your home like seek out someone trusted that works with energy or spirits that could help you with that so I feel like as you work your way through like your chakras you have probably been using your eyes a lot to spot the different rainbow colors so the different colors are associated with different chakras so but with this chakra things as well it's like you could visit art galleries you could look at paintings from like a distance and close up you could go to art shops and admire like the beautiful range of colors or pencils and um, watercolors and I always say to people go out in nature look look at the trees look at the flowers look at the sun when we have it look at the sky and notice how things change throughout the day and so, you know, there's just so much um, beauty out there. It just is how we can see it. You know, beauty is everywhere. Even if you're stuck in heavy traffic and it's like an ugly part of like the town that you don't like, you can still find beauty if you look for it. It's all about find. you know what I mean? Like two people can look at the same thing. Like one might see, you know, um, rain, mud, like an overgrown wasteland and then the other people could see like oh my god look at the stars look at the moon like it all depends um I kind of like this saying there is beauty above me look up and you might notice the high white clouds racing around the sky there is beauty before me you might notice the rich fiery red of the tall lights on the van in front of you or the sun reflected in the windows of a building there is beauty to the left of me. For the first time, see that the car in the next lane is shimmering abstract of reflections of dark, dark gleam of high gloss paintwork or a slick of mirror and chrome. There is beauty to the right of me. Notice a play of light and colours on reflective surfaces as the traffic stream passes. There is beauty below me. Look down at the folded fabric of clothes on your lap. The subtle textures, the little canyons of light and the shades that form in the pleats and creases. There is beauty behind me. You might notice a curving chain of lights in your rear view mirror, abstract of lights and tones, geometric shapes and subtle curves. There is beauty inside me. My anger and frustration have been transformed by the exercise of looking and there is beauty all around me. Yes, there is. So... <laughs> I like that example because it just shows us no matter which corner we look, even if we don't see it with our physical eye, like we say, look for the bits of colour, look for the flashes of light. And I just want to say for this um, chakra as well, it's so important where you can to, how can I put it? Get Get sunlight, get sunlight where you can. Make sure you're getting out there for because the sunlight will activate your dna it charges your body and it is so important to us now when this third eye is working well you know where you are going in life and what you want to achieve but if your long-term plans are a bit hazy try making a vision board i did speak about this in my previous video and i just think it's such a powerful thing you can do you know find a stack of old magazines and cut out the pictures and phrases that inspire you put the board up on the wall and use it to focus your intention this is an example like without having to do something online too it is easy to do them online but 
like I say, be a bit old school, just do something more simple. Like, it, it's a really good thing. Like, um, some of you might have even heard of those books like The Secret and stuff. I personally haven't read them, but I know a few people that have. And it is true that when you make your goals visible, all sorts of opportunities and helpful people will suddenly become visible too. It ties into what we call things like manifesting and setting intentions. And you can also do like um, visualizations too. So imagine yourself and like is a situation or something you want to happen in your life um imagine yourself like how would that make you feel what do you see what inspires you and allow just to the answers to touch you and to come forward and that will be your soul showing you where it wants you to go next okay so just trust and believe in what your soul is shown to you now in the third video on from this so my next one I will be doing a third eye chakra meditation but I hope this has been helpful and thank you for listening